The first thing we're going to do is grab a piece of wood. This is going to be one of the bigger blanks. Um, so what we would like to do with this is we're going to go through the process of um, turning this into the top support disc. The way we're going to do that is you have a choice. You can either use a round disc for the pattern or the template or your other choices you can use one that kind of looks like a stop sign. So you're going to choose your template, place it on top of the piece of wood, and then we're just going to trace the perimeter or the outside of it with a pencil just like this. Don't use a pen or anything permanent. Don't trace out at this point any of these spots here. We're going to save that for later on. Now the next thing we're going to do is stop at the scroll saw and we're going to cut off as much scrap as possible. Now when you're doing this, it's helpful to make like a small little scrap line that's a little bit further out from the finish line. And we're gonna do that at all the spots around your project. The reason we do this is just because if we make a mistake when we're cutting, we can very easily sand it away later. Just make sure that before you use the machine that one, you set the hole down so it's touching the top of a piece of wood. Check the blade by plucking it. Make sure that you pull the blast gate open for dust collection. And finally, turn the dust collection system on. Next stop is going to be at the disc sander. So just please be careful when you're using the machine. Keep your fingers away from this little pinch point right over here in the gap, as well as you don't want to touch anything besides your workpiece or the wood against the disc when it's moving. Now our goal is we want to sand right up to the edge of this line that we created earlier and get rid of all that excess material that's left over. Just make sure that when you're doing this, stay on the left side, not the right, and you're going to rock it back and forth and keep it moving so you can sand it nice and evenly and you don't have any flat spots and it doesn't start to burn your wood. thing we're going to do with our project is sand it with sandpaper. Now just like we talked about before we're going to go through each of the different grits of sandpaper starting with the coarse which is around 80 grit or 60. We're going to move on to medium which is around 100 or 120 and then after we sand with those two we're going to finish it off with fine or 220. Now when we're sanding with sandpaper we're going to sand with each grit for about five or six minutes, give or take. And the goal is we want to try to smooth over your whole entire project and get rid of any of the, like, the little fuzzies that are left over or rough spots. And if there's any pencil lines left over, like right here, we want to sand that away. Now, once we're done sanding with the coarse sandpaper, we'll sand for five to six minutes with the medium. Then we're going to move on to the fine sandpaper. Now you can tell the difference just because the course I have labeled as red, the medium is blue, and then the green one is fine. Or if you flip them upside down, the course is usually the darker of all the three. Medium's kind of in between, and then the lightest is the fine. Last thing we're going to do with your top plate is put your name on it. We're going to be using the metal stamps to do so. They're all in alphabetical order, so make sure that you put them back when you're done in ABC order with the initial or the letter facing up. So you're going to do your first name, leave some space, go down further, put your last name. 
So the only things you really have to worry about is one, make sure that the letter that you're using is facing down and touching the top of the piece of wood. The shiny part that you hit with a hammer should be facing up. And then you're gonna see on most of these pieces there's a groove or notch. In order for this to line up perfectly, that has to be facing towards you. So all that you do is you put it on top of the piece of wood, take your hammer, hit it a few times, and then it should leave you with the letter or number, letter in this case, on your project. So you're gonna do that with your first and last name. Once you're done staining and clear coating your project and it's dry, you're pretty much ready to finish this off with adding screw eyes or eyelets to the top and the bottom. That way we can hang it up um, and it's also going to provide a place for our chimes to hang from as well. So for me, I found the easiest way is to grab the template that you used when we traced out the outside perimeter, place it on top, and we're going to be using some of these marks on the top for each side. One's going to be the top, one's going to be the bottom. If you take a look at the template, I kind of made it a little bit easy for you guys. Um, I made the pink ones as the top marks, so one side's going to be the top with three marks, and then the blue ones are going to be the bottom side. So the next thing we're going to do is place our template, whatever one we use to trace it out, on top of our project, and we're going to mark out the pink holes, which are going to be the top. So the easiest way I found to do this is if you take a scratch all, put it through a hole, just to line it up, and then very carefully take a rubber mallet, tap it on the top a few times, and then take it out. It's gonna give you a perfect little spot right there for where the screw eye is gonna go, or the eyelets. And you're gonna do that for a total of three times. The only thing you have to make sure that you're careful of is you don't wanna hit the top of the scratch all too hard, or else the problem is it's gonna take your wood and split it in half. top's finished, then we're going to flip it over and we're going to do the same thing on the bottom. Now it doesn't matter if you line this up in a specific way, um, but all we have to do is make sure that we're on the bottom now, a new side, and we're going to be doing the same thing for the blue spots. Instead of three this time, we're going to be doing four. One in the center, three on the outside. Step for us is we're going to be taking the screw eyes or the eyelets and putting them in those little holes that we used um, the scratch all to make. This is probably one of the most difficult parts. You just need some patience and just to take your time. The easiest way I found to do this is just to get it started and then we're going to use the scratch all to turn it in the rest of the way. Now our goal is we don't want to go through the whole way or else the threads are going to pop out the other side. We're going to push into the wood, at least get it started and you really have to grip it hard, push and turn, and do this a bunch of times until you really feel it start to grab. Once it grabs, it starts to get pretty tight. Then the easiest way is just to take the scratch all, put it through, and then start spinning it around in a circle. And our goal is we wanna do this until the little threads disappear, and it kinda looks like this. So what we'll do is we'll do three for the top, and then after we're done with the top, We'll flip it over and do four for the bottom. Once you get your eyelets in or your screw eyes, you should have three at the top around the outside and try to have them so they're facing the outside like this. And then there should be a total of four on the bottom. There's one under my hand, 
one here, one here, and one here.